Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Paris Air Show at the historic airfield Le Bourget outside the French capital, where our coverage is sponsored by Bell and Leonardo DRS. And we're over here uh, at the Raytheon Enclave to talk to Roy uh, Azevedo, uh, who is the president of Raytheon Space and uh, Airborne uh, Systems. Roy, pleasure seeing you. Congratulations. You uh, took over September 1, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, talk to us about your strategic priorities plan. I know that every senior executive and president comes in with a vision of what they want to accomplish. Talk to us about your top priorities uh, at the business. Thank you, Vago. Appreciate it. Uh, my team, I and my team, are spending a lot of energy on three major areas. One is evolving the business culture. The other is meeting our customers' needs and extending our ISR market position, our three major areas. The evolving the business culture is critically important to meeting the other two areas. We've had thousands of new people hired just in the last 18 months. And so making sure that these employees come in and they know that their opinion is valued, that we expect them to have an impact, that they can bring their whole self to work is something that we're working hard to ensure that it's well known, that expectations are clear. And having all these new people in the business, we want to take advantage of that. New ideas coming in. Customers want us to move faster across the globe, not just in the U.S., across the globe. Uh, our culture, our business was probably not known for moving fast, known more as a bureaucratic organization. And our new employees are helping us get to a point where we are able to move fast, that we can demonstrate to move fast. And we have examples of that. Uh, so give us a, a couple of those examples, because one of the things that I think Raytheon and, and all the leading contractors uh, pride themselves on is to be really values-based uh, organizations. Talk to us, though, how you're moving that ball forward faster. Uh, communicating. Communicating and by example is always the best case in terms of how to move the ball faster. And, and having examples that are demonstrable and that you can talk about. Um, Less than three years ago, we were able to build a brand new IR sensor, space-based IR sensor. Less than $30 million, less than 30 months, launched, on orbit, performing incredibly well. We went from clean sheet of paper to a demonstrator shooting down drones in counter UAS. So using examples like that, and each of those we performed with many new employees involved. Um, talk to us a little bit about the cultural piece. I want to get to the business and the market changing. Obviously, space is a changing market, just like surveillance is. Tell us a little bit about that cultural engineering piece. Is this, uh, you know, not to make it stereotypical, but very, very bright, very uh, talented millennials coming aboard that may not have some of the other uh, common workplace attributes? I mean, you know, talk to us a little bit about what is, what, what's the challenge, what's the problem you're solving? Uh, it is one where we want to make sure we need results, we need to go fast. The culture that I am emphasizing is one that the way that we get results is as important as the results themselves. We want to be able to make sure that people like to come to work and I personally am looking at the values-based management as a discriminator. People will want to come to work for Raytheon because we know that we value their opinion, that we welcome their opinion, and it is something that there is no doubt in my mind is making a difference to the business. And while you're right, in these thousands of new people that were hired, there are millennials that are part of it, we're hiring across the board. We're hiring highly skilled senior individuals all the way down to recent college graduates that we had as interns. And so we attempt to uh, cater to each individual need in terms of the culture. Um, we, 10 years ago, would never have thought of having people working from home as much as they do today. Well, we're doing that. We're doing that because we know that's what our employees are looking to do. That's one example. 
Um, let's uh, talk uh, a little bit about a very, very changing marketplace and how you guys are going to maintain uh, supremacy in it. Because I know that that's, uh, you know, just to echo, uh, you know, Tom Kennedy and Bill Swanson, you know, it was, it was this, we're going to be the very best that we can be in these markets. And Raytheon is one of the companies that has a, a reputation for putting money behind ideas to make wins. You know, as you said, whether it's developing a demonstrator and as Bill Swanson used to pride himself, we put a missile, we didn't put a slide deck on, we developed uh, the product that worked in, uh, whether it was for airborne jet or for uh, the uh, sh uh, shipboard, uh, the successor uh, to uh, the SPY-1 uh, system. Talk to us a little bit about the changing space and intelligence marketplace. Barriers to entry in space are dropping, satellites are getting smaller, cycle times are increasing, and if you look at it in terms of the surveillance game, there's going to be a time when a Google with its drone networks may actually be better at doing some of these broad data fusion things as a Lockheed or a Raytheon or, or any other uh, leading contractor. Talk to us about how, whether it's in counter UAS or air dominance or space, how you guys are trying to take advantage of some of these tectonic shifts that are going on. Yeah, there's no question that the, the market is changing. Um, our customer demands that uh, things are changing. Uh, launch costs have been reduced significantly using the commercial uh, world to, to drop those costs. So how, what are we doing? We're taking as much advantage as we can of the evolution and we're differentiating ourselves from some of the other offerings. One thing that I'm quite confident that Raytheon will always be differentiated in is the technology. And while other companies will continue to develop their own solutions, our solution is going to be where we provide the fastest answer with the highest technology. Um, I believe that will always be the case. Some of the uh, items that you refer to, small satellites, at this point we have universities and labs uh, putting up small satellites. Um, we are working on small satellites, but they're higher capability and likely more reliable. Why? Because we've had a space program for 50 years, 30 years. Raytheon's been in that, and we take advantage of the fact that we have that experience to provide a higher end solution and more reliably. Um, uh, let me take you to uh, counter UAS. A uh, very big challenge, especially now that you can go to uh, you know, publicly available, very, very sophisticated, um, IR-capable uh, aircraft. What is the right way to counter these challenges at a time when we're being, that folks are looking and actually accomplishing swarm operations, for example, that are designed to overwhelm defenses? The Raytheon answer is a layered defense. Uh, we've got solutions that are from RF jamming, directed energy, kinetic on kinetics. And so as we talk about counter UAS as a market, we offer this layered solution and we work with our customers in developing the concept of operations of how one would use it. So for example, uh, a drone is detected, uh, you would likely want to use radial frequency jamming first. If that doesn't work, then you would have to make a decision on do you use a directed energy solution or do you use a kinetic on kinetic? And Raytheon is proud of the fact that we offer across the board solutions. Um, let me ask you about uh, hypersonics. That's something that's a focus of the company. Uh, and Tom Kennedy, uh, the president and CEO of the company, has been talking about that. One of the things that he said that raised a little eyebrows during uh, the conference uh, here, a meeting with analysts uh, to discuss the uh, merger with United Technologies was, look, the U.S. advantage in stealth is decreasing and so the importance of hypersonic systems is actually going to dramatically increase and clearly our adversaries are investing in that too. From your standpoint, what are the key discriminators in this market where everybody is talking about hypersonics, everybody has a hypersonics program, what are going to be the discriminators, the secret sauce that's going to make, for example, Raytheon the partner of choice as opposed to one of the other contractors? Doing. Doing instead of talking is what's going to differentiate us. Having a demonstrator that does what it's supposed to do. And on the other side of that, space and airborne systems where we play is in detecting. So one of the things that we're working on, we have two programs that we're working on right now. There's a DARPA program called Blackjack, small satellite. We were talking about small satellites before. Uh, it's a demonstrator where we're going to show that we can, from a LEO orbit with a small satellite, 
be able to detect and track some of these targets so that we can maintain that track and be able to have the effect on the weapon side, the counter side, is being able to demonstrate that we can knock down a hypersonic. Uh, and do you think that America's stealth advantage now is more fragile than it's been in a long time? I will say that the threat continues to evolve. Uh, we evolve. Um, our competitors uh, continue to evolve, and that is what's driving uh, a lot of what is happening today in the Department of Defense, as you are more than aware. Uh, and a question, last question, uh, one which I have to ask, and I suspect I will get a somewhat less than satisfying answer. Um, uh, United Technologies and Raytheon <laughs> have announced uh, uh, the largest defense and aerospace merger, I think we can comfortably say. Um, and it, the, the new company is going to be Raytheon Technologies. It's early days. It's about a week and a half since you guys announced the deal. Two weeks since you, yeah, a week and a half since you announced the deal. Do you have a sense at all on what the structure is going to be, how you guys are going to be dividing some of these workload? Because I, I always have a feeling that when companies do this, there's a lot more thought that went into it. Uh, sort of like a duck paddling. You're looking tranquil, but there is uh, a lot of activity ongoing. I appreciate the fact that uh, it's a, a week and a half that it was announced, and so there is a lot of work in front of us. Um, this is exciting. It's exciting for aerospace and defense. It's exciting for us, uh, but early days, a lot of work to be done. Roy Azevedo, uh, who is the president of uh, Raytheon Space and Airborne Systems. Sir, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank uh, you. Break a leg and uh, look Appreciate forward to seeing it. you guys down in sunny McKinney, Texas, one of these days. Very good. You are welcome to come down and see us. Thanks Thank very you. much. Always Roy. nice to see you. Great. Thank you.